Hello and welcome back to Wacom Manga and Anime Days 2021. Thank you for joining us on this last day of our three-day online event dedicated to all things manga and anime and a whole lot more. My name is Jeroen and I'm happy to guide you through the introduction. We're thrilled to have you here again. When we started with Japan Online Week exactly one year ago, we could not have imagined that this would turn into such a nice and lively community. This event is brought to you in collaboration with our partners Pixiv and Clip Studio Paint. And with us now is Carl Stolmo, and he will be talking about cell shading coloring using Clip Studio Paint. But before we jump into the talk, let me share some of the basic housekeeping rules with you. This session will last approximately one hour with a dedicated Q&A session at the end. We will be keeping an eye on the chat, so feel free to send your questions anytime you wish. As you know, this YouTube live stream will be running for the entire day. This will give you heaps of time to connect and socialize with other creatives. Please be kind to each other and do not spam the chat. This talk is being recorded and will be shared on Wacom YouTube channel the next week. Now, let me continue with a brief introduction of who we are. Wacom has been around for some 40 years and we are the pioneers of digital pen input technology. From creative pen tablets and interactive displays to mobile pen computers, we offer creatives powerful tools to express their ideas. But we would not be here without our partners Pixiv and Clip Studio Paint. Pixiv is a social network platform for artists that focuses on communication through their artworks. It was launched in September 2007 and specializes in artwork publication and communication based on the concept of make creativity more enjoyable. They have now over 50 million users going strong. You can visit and join the amazing community of Pixiv at pixiv.net forward slash en. Now let us bring on Joanna to do the introduction on behalf of Clip Studio Paint. Thank you very much. So for those of you who don't know about Clip Studio Paint just yet, it's versatile graphic software best suited for drawing and painting to create a wide range of content. With a wealth of unique features, it helps to create anything from illustration over manga to concept art and even animation. Whether professional or hobbyist, Clip Studio Paint's natural drawing feel, along with its manga and comic features, of course, is loved by artists from around the world. Thank you very much. We're excited to be here. Yes. One more thing before we start. If you are based in the EU or UK, we have an amazing offer for you all. Please visit Vacom eStore and use the discount code MANGA20 for a discount of up to 20% on a wide range of Vacom products, including Vacom One, Vacom Cintiq, Intuos, and Intuos Pro. For those who are outside of Europe, please check your local Vacom eStore or dealers for ongoing promotions. Now, time to start. Joanna will be your host of the session and with her is Carl Stolmo. Uh, he's a 24 year old illustrator from Spain. He's been drawing for four years now, worked as a freelance and comic artist and works mainly on Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop for his drawings. And I'm sure you've seen plenty of his artwork on various social media channels before. So without further ado, let's bring on Carl's and Joanna and start the session. Uh, hello, uh, thank you for coming here. Uh, I'll do my best to explain all the things I have to explain and make it understandable. So, um, well, today I will talk to you about how to, to color and shade in a very simple way, only using two fusion modes, one called overlay for lighting and one called multiply for shadowing. It's very simple, but I think it, it works very well. So, um, first of all, I, I made this character here and I will show you step by step how I put the colors in, in the character. And then I will show you how I apply the same knowledge into a full drawing. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I think it's important to know a little of, of color theory. We don't have the time here to, to explain all the color theory, but I have one tool that I think it works very well. It's, it's called Adobe Colors. Um, I normally, well, I think it's a, it's a very good way to find colors that work well together. 
in this case, I, I use this for, for the sake of, of doing the tutorial. Okay, so um, I with this color wheel that we ha you have uh, a lot of different color combinations here. You can okay, you can try different things and things like that. Okay, I, I chose um, these colors here. Okay, and I use these colors um, to 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 color this character. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but at least it's how I like to work. So okay. Here you have, for example, the, the color combination I used. Okay. Um, doing this, I, I choose the orange color to like I, I I wanted one color to pop up more than the others. In this case, it's the orange one because I want the the view of the the, the, pe the person watching this to focus on her head. And the thing you see more here is this this green color. I this orange color, sorry. So um, once you have these colors, it's very easy to do some variations to it. For example, um, I have the, the Clip Studio in Spanish, sorry about that, but it's the same route, okay? For example, you, you go to Tonal Correction, and then you can try, like in Tone, Saturation, Luminosity, you can try to, to change some, some things. Wait a second, here, okay. Uh, uh, uh. It's very simple but you can change things about the character and then fix it um, to make it work better. Okay, so just a, a, quick, a quick thing about how, how you can color things and try different color applications. Okay, so, okay, one time, one, one, once we have the, the main colors picked up, um, we go to the shading, okay? For, for this, this webinar, um, I want to show you how to light the characters with different light sources. For example, um, if the light source is, is here, we will use this to, to focus the light source, okay? One cool thing to have is that here, for example, we have the, the layer of the coloring. If you, you, you don't have this, you, it looks like this. It's very, it's very messy, but it works, okay? So uh, now uh, we will make a new layer here. And here we have uh, a thing that I use a lot. Um, when you click this button here, it uh, adjusts the, the layer to the layer beneath, for example. Okay, let's see. I will do a, an example here. Um, if we paint like here, it, this goes outside the drawing. But if we click this button here, this uh, layer attaches to the layer beneath, okay? And this is very useful when you want to work with lightning and shadows and things like that. Okay, so um, we will do a new layer and we will adjust the, the layer in the thing beneath. And then we will choose these, these are called uh, fusion modes, okay? This thing here. Um, here it, it, it says normal, okay, when it's normal, it's when you are drawing like, 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 like painting like this, like normal things, like uh, it, it doesn't apply any, any, any filter of these ones, okay? But um, the ones I will be using today is one, it's called, um, here in, expand, in, in Spanish is superponer, but in English it's overlay, okay? So we click over here. And for example, I will choose this color here, this, this yellowish color. And, and we will start um, putting the shadows, for example. Okay, I think it works, right? Well, to show you how, how this, this works, if you see, this is, the, this is what um, the overlay mode um, does, okay? So, you can, you can work um, in, in two different ways doing this, okay? You can start uh, applying the, the light from here uh, manually, okay? Or you can, um, this is the way I normally work, you can fill everything with one color, okay? And then uh, use a, a mask, okay? What a mask does, um, if you use um, this thing here, that is like an eraser, 
it, it does like the same thing, but you still have in here the, the base color. You are not um, erasing anything you had before. Okay, so if you want to, to, to fill it again, you, you pick any color and you do it again, okay? So let's start with this. Okay, okay, so. Okay, so the light is here and we will start to, to well, the uh, uh, important thing to do here is that you need to, to understand the shapes of, of and the volumes of your character. Okay, so this way it will be easier to, to, to shadow and, and light the character. A lot of people, when, when they are shading or, or uh, putting lighter, lightning in the character, they only do like the tiny borders. This can work, I will show you um, how it can work but you don't have to be afraid to, to put more color and to exaggerate the light a little more, okay? So we will be doing this, this layer first, focusing on the, on the volumes and, and the, the places where the light um, pops up more. In this case, it's this part of the head here, okay? Once, if you, we mess up with something, we can we can raise it and, and fix it. So that's not no problem. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. First, we do a, a rogue um, coloring of all all the things we have to do. For example, okay. I'm, I'm trying to go fast with this. I, I don't want to spend oh, like no, three hours here. Sorry. <laughs> you don't have to go too fast. Okay. 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 I think I think you're doing great on time. So it okay. seems like you're, you you can just do your thing. It will okay, all be okay. good. <laughs> okay. So well, we are coloring now. Normally I listen to music when I do this. Now it's only silence. But when, uh, okay. What do you listen to when you're when you're usually drawing? I, I don't know. My musical taste is very messed up. <laughs> I try to listen to everything. I think even I don't know even the songs I don't like. I try to listen and listen and listen until I like them. <laughs> very weird thing. Does I that do. work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I end up singing that songs. <laughs> I mean, if I hate that song, it's weird. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So in my case, then that my shapes of the, the hands and things like that are very squarey, I think it's very easy to to find a way to 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 shade them. But you 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 need to if you are using this way to to color and and to render, you need to like how I can say this, you need to make it yours. Like um, you need to fit uh, this thing into your style, okay? So this only needs a lot of time and experimentation, I think, but overall, I think it's a very simple and, and easy way to, to color and make it work. Okay, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Did you do a lot of experimentation to find your own style? Well, uh, I really didn't. I just drew a lot. I think I I don't know where where I read this, but um, I listen to to well, I I, I think I listen to this on a podcast or something. But uh, one artist said that the best way to improve is to stay in your comfort zone and draw a lot in your comfort zone because you are improving. In, in inside your comfort zone and it's easier to to get better at it but mm. I think 
I personally like to go outside my comfort zone a lot more, but nowadays I'm trying to improve the, the most I can with the style I, I, already, I already have. I tried realism and things like that, but I'm, I'm very bad at it. It's, I think it's important to, to study a lot because mm. when, when I started drawing, I started like four years ago because I didn't like the, the, my university well, that, the, the, that, was a, that I was studying on. Mm -hmm. And I started to, to draw because I didn't know what else to do. And well, it, it kind of worked, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure most people think it works really well for you so <laughs> and I think nice. a lot of people are also surprised to hear that you've only been drawing for four years that is very impressive you must have been, how much time do you spend drawing all day this is all day, day my <laughs> I don't know I'm very workaholic and and I I don't know I like to spend a ton of hours doing things because in my brain, I have a lot of ideas and I think that I need to work a lot to, to make them to make them all. Hmm. So that's a problem. That's a problem. I think it's important to know when to finish and when to have free time and time for yourself. But well, if you like what you do, it's not that bad, but it's important to, to find breaks, I think. Hmm. Do you make sure that you take like I don't know, do like some exercise and take a walk every once in a while? Yeah, I try to every morning uh, run a little because I don't know, I sleep very bad. I don't know why, but I sleep, even if I don't drink, I, just, I, I wake up with a hangover every day. I don't know why. <laughs> and the only way to, to wake up entirely is by making some sport, even if I hate to do that, but it works. It's my little secret. <laughs> that that is is a good secret. I think it's it's good to have a routine like that. that yeah, I'm yeah. sure that's that's good, especially if you're sitting all day and having to work like that. Um, do you have any artists that inspire you? Inspired you when you started out? Well, I think my my main inspirations. Um, a lot of people know this, but one is Brian Lee O'Malley, the, the creator of Scott Pilgrim. I really love that comic. And another one is um, Inia Sano. Um, it's a manga artist. Um, he made uh, Oyasumi Pum Pum. It's a very depressing manga, but I don't know. I think those are the artists I learn it more mm. and I like the most. So I, if I had to to have two reference, I think those two will be the, the most important. And well, a lot of, a lo another reference I have is a game I played a lot when I was little, it's called Rhyme and Dots. I played on a Dreamcast and I don't know, it, it was my favorite game. I try to play it once a year. Okay, I think this is, is good right now. Okay, so, okay. Um, we already have the, the, this thing um, done. And then, okay, um, to make it work the best, um, let me say if this, for example, it's uh, a day, um, a daylight, okay? It's a white light in it. But if we went to do it a little darker, I will add here a, a, darker, a darker background. And then we go into this layer beneath, and then we will make a new layer. And um, here we have a layer beneath the top and the down layer, and it's connected to the base layer here. So now we will be using the multiply tool. Okay, here we go to the multiply tool. And in this case, I will choose one color, like a lot of people um, use gray color to shade. I think you need to shade with, uh, with colors, not with a gray scale, okay? In this case, um, because the background is a little reddish, I will use a more um, reddish tone, like here, the one I am picking here. And then when you are using multiply, it does the opposite, the opposite of the overlay one. It um, darkens the image, okay? With the coloring you are using. In this case, whoops, sorry. 
in this case, okay, normal, uh, multiply, I think, okay. We will go to a brighter color. Okay. And maybe we can use a little, hey, this is all um, trial and error until you find something that works. I think it's too reddish. Uh, uh, well, you can try it uh, a bluer one, maybe it will work. Hmm. I don't know what to choose. I think this works better in this case. Okay, we will um, go in with this. Um, the same, you can do the same thing as the overlay, okay? If you um, want to, you know, we are shading now. Um, imagine you are doing only the shadows. You can do the same. Um, you can do a, a mask layer here. You can go like this and you can start, um, Putting the doing the same thing as we did, but at the moment I prefer to having everything in shadows and then put this light. And for example, okay, I want a, a more clear light. Wait a second, overlay, more clear light. I think it will work better. Okay, uh, here we can. Okay, this uh, I didn't explain this. If we have a, you have a layer and you want to change all the color, you can go to edition, I think, yeah, edition, and you can, um, here in Spanish is substitute color, but you can substitute, the, I think it's called like that. You can change yeah. the color you want, yeah? <laughs> okay, yeah. is, is what I just made, with, did with this. I think this works better. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Oops. Okay, well. Okay. Okay, okay. So now we will be adding a, a blue light here to see how that works. Okay, let's make a new layer here. Attach it to the bottom in with this button. Uh, uh, um overlay here and then um, we'll pick a blue color. As I said, this is a lot of trial and error to, to watch what works best with the drawing. I think this works well. Maybe we can try, no, this works better, I think, yeah. Okay, so that's uh, the same thing. Like now we will do what I, the thin layer of light right here. Okay, let's imagine the this sprite it's a little farther. Okay, you can see it. Um, and okay, let's do this. <laughs> this is very sketchy right now, the, the coloring, but if you have more time, you can add more details and focus more on the small things. But right now it's only for showing you. Okay, here you can put a little light here too. Okay, maybe we don't want this light here. Okay. Do you have any shortcut keys that you use a lot? When drawing? Well, uh, control Z. That's my <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I'm very yes. bad with, with, a, with shortcut keys because I'm, mm. I have a very bad memory for things like this. And it's like, okay, I try to do everything manually, even if it's better to use shortcut keys. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> But you, I think you had the, the alt for color picking. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I forgot about this. Yeah, yeah. If you you, <laughs> you press alt, you can color pick all the things you want. So this is the main two I'm using, control Z and alt. And well, when you want to uh, save, I think it's control S, even if I, I go to here, but okay. Mm -mm -mm. Whoops. 
what I am doing. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. And as I say, you can spend here like a um, lot more of time to, to clean it up um, more nicely and put more details. But at the moment, I think it's working. So, okay. So you already talked about that you exercise in the morning. So you just get up, exercise, and then draw all day. Yeah, that's my <laughs> Essentially. life. <laughs> I, this, this year, I, I am uh, trying to make myself have uh, one free day per week. Mm -hmm. I, that's just okay. one? <laughs> yeah, because I have a lot of things to do and a lot of things I want to do. But next uh, last year, for example, I didn't have a single day. I think I have one weekend that I did something, but I, I, I was working all year. Yeah. Because I, I don't know, I wanted to reach, uh, um, to, to, to have a better, like, understanding of everything I was doing. And I think the only trick to get better at what you do is by working a lot. So I wanted mm. to get better faster. And it was like, okay, the only thing I can do is to work a lot. But well. I think it, it went well. I'm, I'm sure people agree. <laughs> and it's probably also sad because there is no magic trick. It's just draw a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's some people that has a lot of talent. I don't know. Uh, sometimes I'm looking, at, looking at, at Instagram and I see like, like amazing drawings, like a, a super good art. And then I see the, the profile of that person and he's only 15 years old or 13 years old. And it's what? What happens here? What 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 she do? She did to achieve that. Well, you only you're only drawing for four years, so that's probably the same kind of I don't know the same kind of perception for a lot of people. <laughs> Are I, you ever not motivated to draw? Like, well, I I. I, I draw when I was little, but I didn't take it uh, too seriously. Mm. It was like the typical mm. doodles in, in the textbook yeah. school and things like that. But because I was, there is this, this thing about uh, making art for a living. And the, the general consensus about this is that it's a very hard work, it's very difficult, um, it's very bad paid. So th this is, th there are these fears. And I had a lot of fears about it. And I preferred to study another thing to be safer, I think. But then it was this thing. I, I knew that I wanted to draw. So I started drawing. And at the moment, it's, it's going well. But it's a lot of time, a lot of hours. And, and if you want to, to be better fast, it's a lot of, of sacrifice. I think, but if you like it, I think it's 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 very cool. I don't know. It's 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 amazing to to be able to bring your characters into life and things like that. Speaking of which, uh, for this character, there was a question. It's like, how did you think? How did you come up with the idea for this character? Ah, well, if I'm being sincere, I don't know, <laughs> but. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted to like, okay, let me think. I, I think I wanted to do like, uh, I wanted to add this teeny light um, fiery. So I think this is why the, the girl has more of a, a medieval look, I think so. But then she has brackets, so I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I, I like Very to, to, to have a better answer for these kind of things, but... It's like I try to, to draw everything that comes into my head. I don't have mm. a, a secret method of it. I, I try to watch a lot of things, read a lot of things. And I don't know, when I was little, mostly I, I read a ton of comics and of mangas and things like that. And 
I think I have a lot of reference from that time. Hmm. So Do you still read a lot of comics now? I'm trying to, but I don't find the time to do it. I have, like, my problem is that I like to buy comics and mangas, but then um, they are on my bookshelf and <laughs> they are there. I, I need to yeah. time to, let, to, to read more. So you're doing mostly illustrations. Um, do you think about like the world you're building as well? Yeah. When you have characters. So at first, um, I I I didn't know what to draw. I used to do like fan arts and things like that. But then, um, well, my my secret, I think it's not, well, not a secret, but I think a, a good way to to be able to. To, to draw interesting pieces and, and worlds is that I started with two characters. I started drawing um, two demon girls. Um, and then I, I was um, thinking about how they were, where they live, and the world started to create by itself. And then it's easy when you have some characters and one world uh, that you know how the world that the work you made works, okay? So it's easy to, to, to think about um, different situations that you can make into your drawings. I don't know if I'm explaining, explaining it well. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay, one little thing about this. Uh, um, okay, so we have this light, we have uh, this other light. Because the light uh, comes from here, I think it's, it's important to, for example, we, we have, um, well, we can... We can Okay, one second. Um, you, we can use a, a brush like this, a more soft brush, okay? And then we make it bigger. And then we erase a little the down part, okay? Density, this is opacity, I think. Okay, we erase a little of this because the light comes from here and it has to be stronger in this side. And the same goes from, from here, okay? So a little detail. And well, uh, the last thing here is that we can make another layer, uh, a super uh, an over, overlay tool, okay? And then we 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 have um, well, we make like a more overall overall light. For example, we make this thing here, okay? So the light is stronger here, and the same for the blue light, okay? Okay, I think it works. I think it works. Okay, so um, this is not part of what I wanted to tell, but um, uh, what I do personally um, when I I finish the 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 color and shadowing and everything of 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 the my character, I normally um, paint the the liner. In this case, the line art is black, pitch black. What I try to do, I try to never um, draw pitch black, okay? I try to, in this case, we have red here. Let's make it a more purple one. And then we will move the, the color here. It's almost black, but it's not black, black, black. So, whoa, okay. A little more blacker, darker, sorry. Uh, I think it looks better. And then what I do with what I do with this is that um, you can in this uh, thing button here you can block the layer, and it works similar that what we did this but in the same layer itself. Okay. At, and when I what I do is that I lower the, the opacity of my brush, and I try to I pick this color for example, and then I do these things. And I don't know it. It for the details. It it looks. I think it looks cool. You know, this is at least the way I do. You have to to find the the way of 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 working that works better for you. I personally like to to keep it simple because when I see like a a ton of things and a ton of brushes and I get stressed. So at least for me, it works to 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 keep it very simple. So yeah, 
as you can see, a uh, kid is very messy. So this, if if it, this was a final drawing, I I needed to I need to clean it a little, uh, clean it up a little more. But well, you you get the the general idea of it. Mm. And for example, um, you can try a lot of different variations if you choose because uh, if you choose different color, the mood of your drawing will will change a lot. For example, if we use we use here a, a, what what is it on a reddish color, it might look more like the character is more more bad or more badass or I don't know. But you can try these things. I think this is a good, very good exercise to, to do, like having your own character and trying to like the character in different ways. For example, here I have this, only to show you, um, I made these faces, okay? I applied the same thing here, okay? I have the, the base face here, and then I did the same, uh, depending on the mood I wanted, uh, I applied here, uh, different tones of, of dark, um, more blue is here, a more that is here. Here, for example, I did like, I don't know, the light of a, of a window, like it's it's a little, you know, that thing that you, you close the window. I don't know who it's called in English. But well, you have this and then it's the same process. Uh, you start, you can start with this or with the light, but I, here I started with the shadows and then you apply more light. And well, here there are some little details, but as you can see, this is only um, using overlay and, and, and multiply. And at least is what works for me a lot. Like you can use, for example, I will do this example when you have, well, I can try to explain this. Like, well, it's, you only have to know where the light comes. If the light comes from beneath, um, you have to know like a little about the shapes you are doing. If it comes from um, outside, it's not called outside. Well, no. you understand the light here. It comes from beneath uh, the girl. So you need to know a little how that works and the type of light um, the girl or the, uh, the character will have, okay? So, for example, sometimes I also do this. Um, I will use this as a, as a, okay. Okay, this is connected. And then sometimes I use, no, I, I don't use any layer, uh, any, any mode. I use the normal mode. And then I don't know if this will work in here, but then I try to press, oops, sorry. Pressing here, and sometimes it can make a good, uh, okay, it, it can look good. Like it can, the light looks more, um, more dense, I think. Okay, so um, this is the main idea. Like only I, the, the way I normally color, you only using uh, overlay and, and multiply. Now I will show you, um, well, in a general view of how I, I try to apply this in a full drawing, okay? This is my last post I did. Uh, and it seems like, uh, it, seems, it seems complicated, but I think it's very simple uh, in the, the way it's colored. Okay, this is the fixed one. Okay, this is the, I'll do here I have the, the first sketch, then I do this final sketch. And then I try to do coloring. Okay, so I will show you how uh, to apply colors to this. Okay, first of all, when when once I have the the the, the sketch, I try to focus on the light source. Here it's very clear the light source. It will be the sun here. So we already know that there will be a, a part here that will not be lightning or uh, lighted. Light will light. Okay. And because the mountains, and then all the light will come from here to here to here. To here. Okay, so um, I will show you, for example, um, the, this layer. I I, this is the, well, this is the FX layer. I try to add some effects here. For example, I use a normal brush to make this thing here. Okay, uh, here I have a little uh, multiply brush to make it like seem 
seem a little darker here. Uh, this is a little trick I have. I like to, when, when I finish a, a drawing, depending on the lighting of it, I think it's cool to, to make it, if you, can, if you see there is a circle or a little more, more, um, more shadowy uh, outside the drawing. This makes like uh, the, the, the focus of your eyes to, to see the main characters in the front of, uh, in the center of the image. Okay, and here, for example, I have a, a overlay thing, yeah, to, to make the, the sun a little shiner. But if we don't have this, we have the characters here. As you can see, I, I try to organize in layers, but in this case, I just made um, in here, what, sorry, in here, I made all the little objects here and the characters in one layer. And here in the other layer, I did um, the background. And here it's the scene, okay? So in this case, for example, here we have the line art that I tried to paint, as you can see, um, after uh, like these little things here, for example, but this is a little messy, but you get the idea. Um, here I tried to paint the, the little things. And then we have, let's go to the base colors. Oops, sorry. This is the, ba the base colors. Um, I tried to make them a little, greenish, I orangey, sorry, I'm missing green and orange, sorry. And then, oops, then it's the same thing. I try to use a, a multiply uh, tool here. In this case, I didn't use um, a, a hard brush. I used a, a soft brush to do the shadows because I wasn't interested on making very dark, everything very dark. Okay, and then we have the overlay tool. This is what uh, makes the, the volume of the heads and everything. I think this is, I don't know. I think it's, when you understand it, it's, it's very simple and it can look very good. And then another overlay uh, tool to make it a little bright left, right there. Okay. And um, then for this, this layer here, for example, um, I, Painted at first using black uh, colors, black, very black colors. If you if you can see, I only I am using here like this color here, this color here, this this. I'm using like two variations of uh, two or three different colors to keep it simple. Um, and then I used the uh, uh, overlay tool to like paint these little details here. As you can see little details to make the thing with more volume and I don't know it looks it looks like it has a lot of flyers in it but it's really simple on once you 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 know how to color it mm, and the C for example okay for example one thing uh, I want to say about this drawing is that uh, as you can see there, um, you mostly have um, reddish tones like um, yellow, uh, orange, red, um, things like that. And then you have a little of blue tones because they help to make the, the image more cohesive, co cohesive, I think it's called. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I don't know, It's I think it's cool to, to combine, um, to different colors like that. Uh, like you see the color wheel here. I think it's cool that if you're using uh, reddish tones, you can use them um, in, in, in less amount, um, bluish tones or greenish tones. And the same goes for, for example, like this, if you are using um, orange, eye green, I think it's cool to use tones um, at the, of the opposite of the wheel, for example. I think it's a, it's a cool trick, uh, it, it works a lot. And for example, uh, here, well, this is a little messy, this layer here, because I try to organize it. But you know, for example, I start here with um, this basic thing, like here, to, to know how the colors work here. Then I did another layer with a little of, of, of shadows here and things like this, very, very ugly, if you see like this. But then here I, I made a another light here. What, I, what, I, what is the sun? Okay, sorry. Uh, here I put the shadows of the, the, the mountains and the things uh, here. 
And then, uh, well, these two go combined. What I did, uh, well, I did uh, the, the C first, and then I, I duplicate that and I move it a little. And, the, and the, this beneath is the same of the, the white ones, but yeah, in the darker tone. I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but I'm trying to show a little uh, perspective of how I do these things. And well, at least if this is how I try to work, like I'm talking about colors now, not about uh, composition because this is an, another whole thing. But I think it's good to, to keep it simple, only using overlay and multiply, at least is how I do it. But well, I think uh, it can be useful if you, you use that way. And well, for, for the moment, um, I think I explained it everything I wanted to explain, but if you want me to explain more things, I can try to explain more things. Or if anyone has questions about it or any anything, or questions yeah. about anything really, I I, <laughs> I, I I don't care. Yeah, I think you explained it really well. It's very interesting to see your process in all of the in in the image as a whole. I think that was very good. Uh, insight in your in your work. Uh, how how long do you usually spend on a big illustration like that that you just showed us? I'm driving like this, uh, ten hours, I think. I try I try to work on different things every day. Mm -hmm. right now I'm working on on this drawing on uh, here. Ooh. I'm working on this. I'm I'm sketching the the character, but I try to 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 work uh, well. I normally uh, take 10 hours to finish a diving like this, but I try to work a little every day in each project I'm doing. Like for example, uh, on, the, on the drawing side, I try to, for example, one day I do the sketching of a lot of ideas I have. Another day I try to do um, the line art. And the next day I do the base colors. And the last day I try to do the rendering. And I, I work in a drawing like two or three hours each day until I finish it. And then I have time to do more things mm. because I think um, you can you can try to make a full drawing in one day, but you get you will get tired of it. It happens a lot to me that when I when I'm looking in one drawing I make, uh, if I'm more than three or four hours working in it, I already hate that drawing. <laughs> and that's bad when it happens because you, you doesn't uh, see your drawing with a real perspective because you have been so many hours working on that that you'll hate it with all your soul and it's like okay you need a little break and then you can return to draw. Yeah, but yeah, I, th I think a lot of people can relate to that. <laughs> Just look at the drawing too much, and then you have a fresh eye the next day when you keep going and working. Yeah. Um. So a lot of people discover mistakes from their first drawing, like after they had a bit of time, do you do you like uh, fix your line art or fix the lighting in a lot of your work? Yeah, it, like happens, when you... it happens to me a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, when, when I, well, when, wait, wait a second, I will put a, a, a speed pine on here while I'm, I'm talking. Uh, 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 what is that thing? Here, uh, wait a second. Uh, um, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> no problem. And we'll use this one. This way, it's it's. I can keep talking. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, it happens to me a lot. Like um, one thing that bothers me a lot is that I normally see the the errors of my drawings after I upload them on Instagram. Oh so yeah, that, that, that <laughs> bothers me a lot because it's like okay, I don't want to delete the drawing and, and publish it again. It's very frustrating. But do you do that? Do you delete the drawing or I do you just like? Uh, like when I started, but then I, I, I try to, I don't know, I think, I don't know where, where I read this, but I think a drawing is never finished. Like you can keep working and working and working on the same drawing for months if you want. But I think it's important to, to know when to finish a uh, drawing because 
um, it won't be good if you are working on a drawing for mm -hmm. so many, so many, so many days and weeks because it's what I said before. You 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 will end up finish finish um, hating that drawing, and that's not good. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that, especially because your drawings have so many so many little details. Do you sometimes take details out again after you're done? What mm. do you think is like this is too much? No, well, no, not really. I I don't know. I exactly don't know how I put these many details. I, I don't think a lot when I'm doing my drawings. Like in yeah. this one, I'm only focusing on putting branches and, and rocks and, and things on the floor. I don't yeah. think like, okay, this composition, it's working, it's not work. I, I'm just going with the flow of the drawings. <laughs> And then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I, I need to, to think more about the things I'm doing, but uh, that, that I, uh, at least for now, it's working. Yeah. Do you have a favorite part about drawing? Like, do you like the line art more or the coloring more? Yeah, I think I like the, the line art the most because when I have time, when I don't have time, the line art is the most frustrating thing ever. Because mm. I think that the most, difficult thing is the the sketching part because when when i started drawing i did a lot of one thing i think you don't have to do is that when you don't like your sketch um don't uh finish uh, don't don't how it try to okay let me start again you, you, you <laughs> need ahead. to be happy with with your sketch in order to 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 make a good drawing because a lot of times uh, a lot of people make the error, I think uh, I did that a lot, that um, you don't like the sketch, but you keep drawing, then you, and you think, okay, with the line art, uh, it will be better. And then you do the line art and it's a mess. And then you will you say, okay, with the coloring and shading, it will be better. And then you do it and it looks very bad. And that happened to me a lot. So I think um, every step you, you make, um, the drawing needs to, good, uh, to look good because mm. it will i don't know i think it's it's a better way to to work because it's you can't uh rely in in fixing the drawing uh if if you don't like the drawing at all when you are starting i think you have to like a little of what you are doing mm -hmm. yeah i think that makes a lot of sense but for um, example you you need to to try to imagine how the drawing will look when you finish, because this drawing, for example, the, the sketch, the first sketch look, look horrendous, like, I don't know, those characters look very bad, but when, if, if the pose kind of works, then you can try to develop that. But yeah. at least you, you need to have an overall idea of mm. how it's working uh, or not. I don't know if I'm explaining well. I'm trying. I have. Oh a lot yeah, of yeah, things. absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, do you go into uh, the lighting when you have an illustration like this? Do you think about the light first, or do you think colors first, or because there is so much going on? Well, I try. Like like I said before, I try to go to step a step by a step. I see a lot of artists that. Um, they they already start doing the the shading and well the 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 final colors um, on the on the when they start painting they already have no one uh, well they already know the, the the all the colors they want to do. I try to go step by step like by first uh, for example in this dra drawing, I make here the the shadowing okay because mm -hmm. I wanted to to have. Um, the, the zone in the back more, more lighted and the zone in the front more shadowy, okay? But then I, I usually never know what colors I want to do. So here, for example, I start to color the drawing, very, very greenish, but you're only using base colors to, to know everything I'm, I need to, well, every, every different element, um, well, I try to separate every element in different colors, but a very simple colors. As you can see here, mm. the, the greens are very simple, the, the details are very simple. And then, for example, I try to, to fix some things here and there. 
but though uh, wait a second. In this case, th those are my my base colors. And then what I try to do is that uh, I try to apply like shadows like this. I try to apply a lot of um, overlay tools and things like that. And then the drawing starts to, to take form. But this can be a very frustrating part or can be a very rel relaxing part. I try, to, I try to shadow like if I was drawing a mandala or something like that. Like, okay, try to relax because if you don't <laughs> relax, it will... It, does, it will not work. Yeah. So in, the, in this moment here, in, in this drawing, I, 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 I did this, the, the road and everything in the, in the background, very, very shiny. And I think it, it worked. And I started um, painting all the, well, uh, changing all the things I need to, to change in order to make the, the background and the elements on the outside and the, and the front look good. Yeah. But for example, here it's already working. The colors are working a lot, I think. Because... They change really quickly from green to yeah. Not this green. Is, okay, <laughs> this is the the the, the thing I, I I I showed you at the beginning of the of the video here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um. Here. Okay. I I selected in here the 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 green part because I had everything in layers. For example, in this drawing, I had the the road, uh, well, the, the more um, brown parts in a layer, the, the rocks in one layer, the, well, the, the, the trees in another layer, and I had the, all the green leaves in another separate layer. What I did is I selected, like here, you are seeing mm. it, I selected yeah. and then I changed the, with this thing I showed you how to change the, the color wheel. Like, oh, okay, yeah. this thing, okay, wait a second. Yeah, the, the hue and the saturation. Yeah, the hue and saturation thing uh, there's in, in the beginning of the video. And then it, it changes a lot and I like the, the result a lot. Yeah. So different too, because now it's like, it was like a, a summer scene and now yeah, it's yeah. more of an autumn scene. It's very cool to see that. And that it looks, re it really comes together as that. My, um, my 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 friend said the same thing to me like okay it was looking very summery and now it looks like autumn uh, you, i don't know why you are doing this i don't, I don't know <laughs> let me let me work please <laughs> I know what um, do you have any characters you especially like to draw like a type of character you have you you're really fond of yeah i i love my well the 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 demons I, I draw, the demon sisters, mm -hmm. for example, here, that, that were the, the first uh, original characters I did. For example, here. Um, this was this drawing. I, I, I see this drawing now and I hate it a lot, but this was the first drawing of, of Anok I did like three years ago. And mm -hmm. then I started like drawing a lot of these two characters. And for example, I, I, I built a, a history around them, like they are here when they were children. Aww, oh, so no. cute. <laughs> and for example, uh, 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 sorry, I have everything very, uh, and this was the, this is the last drawing I did. This is the demon girl. Yeah. I don't know, I love to draw this and, and her sister. Uh, uh, let's see here. And well, this is this is the other one. I don't know. I, I love to draw them because they are in a very for example, when I draw this this sister, she's she's called May. She's in very um quotidian situations, like okay, we are going to the bar, we are cooking, and this character is more like a, a killer thing, I don't know. And I like to draw her in more over the top as scenes. I don't yeah. know, it's it's this is one thing I like a lot about uh, doing characters. For example, the, the, the mermaid couple I, I showed you before. Those are, to make when I want to make more cozy and romantic drawings, I tend to use that, that the, those ox. When I try to make a more quotidian drawings, I try to use this, this, this demon girl. And yeah. I think it's good um, to have a lot of, of characters of your own and know their story. 
and what they are doing, where they are living. So it's very easy and fun to, to think new, to think about a new situation for those characters. And then you, you know, you always know what to draw next. And I think that's cool. Yeah, I do have a question though. Yeah, do, do you like seagulls? You have I like love seagulls, seagulls. In so I'm... many in so many <laughs> of your pictures. I'm, I'm obsessed with birds. I really love birds. <laughs> I don't know. They are amazing. They they are the the closest animal we have uh, relative to the dinosaurs. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess like I guess movie. you're right in that one. <laughs> so it's like dino dinosaur birds. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think we're getting to the end here. Um, I just wanted to ask again, do you have any any last tips or any advice you can give for people who want to start drawing digitally or otherwise? And just something that's, that's good for people to start out with. Um, well, I think what I said about if you don't know what ideas to, to make, I think it's cool to, to create uh, your original character to work on. And another thing I think it's important, um, you, uh, if you want to keep better at drawing uh, and you don't like what you are doing, and just keep drawing and keep drawing and keep drawing and you will see that every week, every month, uh, you will be getting better and better. The only trick I think is to, or to, uh, is to have a lot of patience, a lot of patience and to, um, make a lot of time to, to draw and the most important thing is to enjoy what you are doing and I don't know try if you want to to improve a lot and faster like I, I try to do try to have breaks try to have at least one or two three days a week don't make what I do <laughs> and well that that's all I think yeah. like yeah can... absolutely that was already fantastic. I think we all learned like so much today from your from your style and your way of approaching things. So thank you so much for sharing your process and well, talking you about your characters. Me. Thank you, thank you for having me. Wow. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you so much, Carlos, for taking us on this creative journey. It was uh Truly fascinating, helpful, and really absolutely beautiful to watch. Uh, the chat was buzzing with questions, um, but I think Joanna kept a keen eye on it and covered all, at least most of them. That was it for this session. We could have gone on for hours because it was so much fun to see and, and listen to you guys. Um, if you want to stay in touch, um, please do find and follow Carl's on his social media. Again, a big, big thank you to all of you who joined us today. Um, we will be back in about an hour, if I'm not mistaken, with Saturday AM to explore the indie manga market. It's going to be a really cool session and the final session of uh, this event. So I'm looking forward to see you all again there. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Joanna. It was really a great session.